Good morning, good morning. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I joke with people. I said, you know, I think I may be Hebrew, Hebrew slave. Working hard, working hard. Oh yeah, it was great, great. I'm just stretching and trying to grab and learn as fast as I can to get on top of what's going on. Oh yeah. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes.
Bless the praise team that you would bless the message today. The Heavenly Father, Lord, the message is the message will touch our heart and minds, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we can spring into action to be able to spread your gospel when we leave this place. I pray for those that are on their way. I pray that they make it here safe. We pray that the Spirit meet everyone where they're at. Amen. So today we give you honor, glory, and praise. For what you've done, for what you're doing. What you're getting ready to do. Strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the Lord say so. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. For those who might be joining us that are guests, we welcome you to Christ Temple. We are a Christ Center Church to make the Jesus Christ to one another. And we are all this welcome. Welcome back home yet again, another Sunday. Definitely a blessing to be here. Um, and now we should come forward. Amen. We praise God again for your presence today. November in the Church of Christ Holiness is National Church Evangelism Month. And so there's a very special effort and emphasis 
on my preaching and God speaking, reaching people who are in church, inviting them to church, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. There is to be some live training every Monday evening over our national call in line. If you would check the national church announcements, you will see the details. With the UCWM's evening prayer, they have every evening at 6 p.m. or 6 p.m. our time. I intended to remind you that last week, Sister Maddie Wynn was the speaker. But uh, this week, Sister Wilmore from the Pacific Northwest and our two dioceses are connected. Uh, I'm sure she will appreciate the support from our United Christian Women tonight at 6 p.m. This coming Thursday is uh, Veterans Day. Uh, veterans, do we have any in the house? Would you all stay? Oh, both male and female veterans. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are uh, so thankful to see you and we feel honored by the nation on Thursday morning. Let me just bring you up to date on some of our sick veterans. Mr. Chrissy, who had surgery this past week, is at home. And uh, this may mean uh, from the sound of the voice of very good progress. According to Donovan, uh, she is recovering. We want to continue to remember her and her prayers, and Sister Pearl is also doing better. Uh, suffering with a pretty severe headache this morning, but let's remember, continue to remember her. Uh, Kurt and Marie, who we normally see here, are quarantined today because of some possible exposure to the virus that is uh, afflicting our land. So I'm certain that they are missing us, but I pray that they are watching by uh, Zoom this morning. I understand Doug is not so well today, so let us remember him and our prayers and also Sister uh, Mary Harris, so we welcome you to hear uh, she sits up there. So and in our family, in the Lindsay family, we lost the uh, last uncle that my our cousin here, Harvey Robinson, we call him Henny, back in the city of Coast Ernestine, her brother-in-law. We will be heading back to Kansas City shortly for those funeral services. So you may also be a member of the Lindsay family. Thank you. Our praise team is going to How many of us know that every praise is due to God? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with flute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything let everything, let everything, let breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord.
guys know the song, just sing along with this. Here we go. Look. Yeah. 
of the sea. I love you, Jesus. I love Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to the earth, and that very day his plans perish. Happy is he who hath God in Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in, in them is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoner. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. Widows, but the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Awesome. On Tuesday of this past week, those of you who follow sports and are connected to the sports world know that the Atlanta Braves took the World Series. Now here on the West Coast, it may come across as home hum and someone else's feet. But if you were living in Atlanta, it would be very, very difficult to escape the excitement that filled the air that the home team had won the World Series. Very first time since 1995. There was for the cities of Atlanta and for those who follow the Atlanta Braves, it was indeed an extremely momentous moment. And I uh, watched some of the celebration, the parade that they had on Friday. I watched a little bit, and the streets of Atlanta were aligned by hundreds of thousands of people. 
people. And some were even projecting that there may be as many as one million people who would come out and uh, observe the parade and join in all of the celebration and the festivities. It's very easy to, if you live in Atlanta, to get have been caught up in that atmosphere. As a matter of fact, one of the bishops who was at our meeting in Birmingham a few weeks ago, he was walking around in our meetings and walking through the halls and he was carrying this cat and the cat had on an A. And I was wondering, what, what's that all about? And uh, then I had a chance to talk with him a little bit or he talked even in one of our sessions. And the next thing I knew that he was pitching the Atlanta Braves. It was the bishop in the Church of Christ Holiness, uh, all excited about the possibility of the Atlanta Braves going all the way. And it's just kind of hard to escape that excitement. It's hard to escape that sense of celebration if you are connected to the city and if you are part of the city. It just kind of flows through the very our atmosphere if you're in the city. And I dare say that there are some Sunday mornings like that in church. You come on Sunday morning and you're not expecting very much. You just kind of, oh, another Sunday, another Sunday morning. You know, I'm here because I'm duty bound. This is what I do on Sunday, you know. Uh, uh, you're like with the comedian heart. Uh, this is what I do. I get up on Sunday morning and I go to church and I don't know anything else to do on Sunday morning. And I'm just coming because I'm duty bound to come. My expectations are very, very low. I know that the praise team has done a few, sing a few songs and uh, there's going to be uh, uh, some preaching done and, and hurry up and let's get it on and let's, let, let's get it over so that I can get out of here and go on about my day. But sometimes you may come into the house of prayer with that attitude. That might be the way that you enter, but then in our midst, something happens. And as you sit there on a Sunday morning, maybe not thinking very much, Maybe really kind of back home processing the past week or, or in your mind or processing the coming week in your mind and you are otherwise distracted and not very much engaged. But then something begins to happen in our midst. Somebody says amen and someone else says praise the Lord and then you notice that someone is on their feet and you begin to sort of take notice and you begin to get caught up in what's happening around you and you begin to say that even though I came in with low expectations and even though I was really somewhere else in my mind and in my thinking, you begin to say, I might need to pay attention because am I missing something? And then the Spirit of God perhaps touches your heart and you begin to lift your voice and clap your hands in praise worship because you catch the fire that's in the worship service. And that's a good reason even as you sit near somebody on Sunday morning if you know that you're sitting next to somebody who's going to jabber all the way through the service, just jabber, 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 ain't saying nothing, it'd be a good opportunity. It would be a good thing to move because we want to be close to where God is moving and where God is speaking. And we want to be connected to the spirit of the Lord so that as his spirit moves through the house, I want to get in his presence and the worship of his high and holy name. The psalmist in Psalms 146 that we're going to follow through this morning, the psalms, this is a psalm that ends and begins with hallelujah. Now the hallelujah that's that is not in our most of our Bibles, but we and we may not realize that, but the Hebrew word hallelujah really means when you translate it into English, praise the Lord. And so these psalms are from 146 all the way through 150, they open and close with praise the Lord. With praise the Lord. I am told that there are three words.
words that are known all around the world and in almost every single language. And those three words that are known everywhere are amen, hallelujah, and Coca-Cola. <laughs> all around the world, amen, hallelujah, and Coca-Cola are known. The psalmist says he writes this morning, and one of the reasons I love the Psalms is that, and they, one of the reasons that they're loved by countless millions of Christ followers and God's people is that the psalm, he is able, the psalmist is able to capture and speak to the full range of human emotions. He's not afraid to let his emotions hang out there. When he's on the mountaintop, you can follow the psalmist to the mountaintop. And he says, enter into the presence of the Lord with joy and with thanksgiving. And then when the psalmist is in the valley, you can identify with him in the valley. As he writes in Psalms 43, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou so disturbed? Whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're just barely making your way through the valleys of life, you can find a point of identification when you read the psalm. When you're going through that difficult place, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Whether, whatever you are, whatever moment or movement it is in your life, there is a psalm that fits the occasion. And so the psalmist, after he has explored all the range of the human experience and picked up his pen and written about them as he has penned the psalms, he begins to close out the psalter from Psalms 146 to 150. And again, it opens and closes with hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And every time you hear the word hallelujah, that word means praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The psalmist has talked about it all. Our doubts, our fears, our victories, our defeats, our sin, our evil. But on the way out as he closes this 150 songs, he's over and over again saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I notice here in Psalms 146, as he opens this psalm, he opens it by saying, praise the Lord, much as a preacher would stand in front of a congregation and would say to the congregation, praise the Lord, and expect the people to respond. But the psalmist very quickly moves from the praise the Lord that he throws out there before the congregation till he says in that same verse one, Praise the Lord, oh my soul. This is all the songs. She's got a public word. Praise the Lord. But then that public word becomes a personal and a private word, almost as though as he begins to think about and reflect on what God is to him. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. You know, that's a good thing to remember when you come to the house of the Lord on the Lord's day. There is that public praise, but there is no praise quite like that private praise that we offer out of our own experience and out of our own walk and relationship with God. Sometimes on Sunday, you begin to survey the situation, look around you, and say, Well, not much happened here this morning. Been there, done that. I don't know if I like that song. I don't know if I want to go there. I don't know if I want to hear that. But then you need to check yourself. Forget about the others. And check yourself. And make it personal. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I need to forget about brother and sister so and so. And I need to praise God because of who he is to me. I need to praise him because of what he has done for 
me even during this past week because he has brought me a way that he has brought no one else. What he's done for others, I don't know what he's done for them. But I do know what he's done for me. I do know how he woke me up this morning and started me on another day's journey. I do know that I was able to press my feet on the floor, rise up and dress myself this morning. I do know that I slept in my own bed last night and not in a hospital bed. Now, this is what I know about myself. I don't know what he did for y'all. As the old folk used to say, I am so grateful this morning that my bed was not my food. I heard that many years as a child growing up. We had an older deacon in every prayer that he prayed. He said, I thank God that my bed was not my food anymore. And I was a child growing up in the church not wondering, what in the world does that mean? My bed was not my cooling board. I didn't understand that from A to Z, but I grew and I learned that if I was in a funeral home this morning and my body was lying out there on the slab, they call that the cooling board. Because the longer you lay there, the colder you get. Amen. You touch your body after it's been dead, and for a little while, that body gets colder and harder. And so the old deacon was saying, I'm thankful that I woke up this morning, and the blood was still running warm in my veins, and I wasn't on my cooling board. I was not in the mortuary, but I was able to get up and make my way to the house of prayer. Oh, I'm grateful this morning, and I feel that psalmist, as he says, he says to the congregation, praise the Lord. But I feel it this morning when he stops and says, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. God. God. I guess we have to wake up somebody. Amen. Amen. He has. Healed my body, met not only many of my, all of my needs, but so many of my wants. He has brought me not some of the way, but he's brought me all the way, blessed my family, and he's not dealt with me after my sins, nor rewarded me according to my iniquities, but God has been merciful. God has been gracious. There are many times when I think about my walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, I just sort of say to myself, well, you know, Emily, you really should have been cut off a long time ago, and your tongue should be cleaving to the top of your mouth, and you ought to be lying in your grave. But you know, it's only God's goodness. It's only God's mercy. It's only God's loving kindness that has allowed you to still be here and still be above ground. It is only God. So I don't know what you came to do today. You might just want to look around and grumble. You might just want to look around and be cute. But I came to praise the Lord. And I could identify with the psalmist. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. This is personal. Praise him, oh my soul. The psalmist says a little further there. He says, I'm going to say praise this little God while I have this life. He said, as long as I am alive, as long as I am living, as long as there is breath in my body, I will praise the Lord. Are you there today? That as long as God allows you to have breath in your body, I'm going to give God his praise because I realize that God has been better to me than I have been to myself. You know, when I look back over my life and realize how far God has brought me, not only has he seen me, but I remember wanting to open a credit card. <laughs> Writing to get a credit card. You know that turned me down? He said, I didn't want to get a big one. 
and it's not done. So that drawing, you know, all my men are and I don't know about you, but uh, where you come from, but churches are not known for huge sound. But I serve a huge God, and that God has made a way. God has been good. And the psalmist said, I will sing praises to my God. As long as there is breath in my body, I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to serve, I'm going to worship the God of gods and the Lord of lords because he is great and is to be greatly praised. Then the psalmist gets his reward. He said, Don't be afraid. Nor the Son of Man, whom there is no help, no find in this. in his life, powerful man, had access to not only great power and might, but had the ear, ear of the president, spent much time there, a man who was known and respected around the world. Those of us who were in the military, we know what a four-star general, well, we know what a general can do. We never hardly, we very seldom ever saw a four-star general. But a man who was a four-star general, a black man who comes as an immigrant to this nation and rises to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs, a man who serves the nation as a secretary of state, a man who's the national security advisor to the president, but it doesn't matter how big you are how much power you have, how much political access you may uh, think you have. It doesn't make any difference how rich, how important. There's only one problem with man. He dies. He dies. That's the problem. We like to talk about what well, is not who you know. It's, it's not what you know. The only problem with that is that who you know, if it's not God, he's going to die or she's going to die. And you might think that they are your ticket to somewhere, but he said, don't don't put your trust. Don't put all of your hope and confidence in man because his spirit departs and he returns to the earth. And it doesn't make any difference how great uh, what great plans he had when he's dead, he's the dumb. It's all over. And we need to realize that sometimes we just have so much confidence in people. I had all kind, I thought I had all kind of confidence in Martin Whitley Thomas. There's a good politician there. I've heard him speak. And his father was a minister, and oh, he's quoting scripture. I thought, oh, there's a good one. I'll, I'll, we'll wait and see. We won't pass judgment, but uh, you know, when you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar, it doesn't make a difference who you are. That's the problem with putting your confidence in man. Man will let you. Let me tell you, let me even make this a little more personal. Don't put all your confidence in the Man. Don't put all your confidence in past me. Because past the Any man born a woman, there is the possibility. And I heard too many people walk away from the church saying, you know, I had all kind of confidence in so and so. I just thought that he was this. I thought he was all of that. And then you know. And have you heard? And boy, was I disappointed. And the next thing you know, they walked away from the church, don't want to have it. The psalmist tried to tell me, do not put your confidence in man, because there's always a possibility. And I love what the psalmist said. He says, happy. Happy. Look at those five. Happy is he that hath the God. Man will fail, but God will never fail. God never fail. Happy is the man, blessed is the man who hath the God of Jacob. It's very interesting 
that he would use. Somehow, God, in His grace and mercy, He says that He's the God of Jacob. Man may fail, but when God enters into that covenant relationship with you, God is able to take man in His, with all of His limitations, change His name from Jacob to Israel, and make Him the father of a great nation. Jacob was not a perfect man, but God used him, and God blessed the nation Israel from his loin. And the Bible therefore says, Happy is the man or woman who hath the God of Jacob. somebody you ought to know. He says, happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help because he's made the heavens and the earth. He is the creator God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God and was not anything made without him. He is the very God of God. He's the God who keeps truth forever. If you want to rest your case with someone who will not lie, because our God keeps his promises. We live in a world of liars, politicians, sometimes preachers. We live in a world of liars, but God keeps his promise. God will never, ever fail. His word is always true. He says here that he keeps truth forever. He executes justice for all the oppressed. You may be like, feel like the children of Egypt down in Pharaoh's land, but God can bring you out. He's the God who gives food to the hungry. And when you follow the story of our Lord through the New Testament, we see that done miraculously. But I was talking to my friend Frank here the other day. We were riding together. Frank was telling me the story. He said that he was in a certain place where he lived for a couple of years. And he says he lived there trying to get back on his feet. He said sometimes they, they would come and tell him, they said, all we got today to feed you all is over. They would be so disappointed. But Frank said, by the time they got the announcement over, somebody would knock at the door and say, look, I got a truck load of this. I got this and I got that. He's not able. He's not only able to do it yesterday, but he's able to do it today. He is the God who feeds the hungry, gives freedom to the prisoner. He's the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind. He raises those who are bowed down. If you are heavy burdened and cast down this morning, we serve a God who can meet you where you are, who understands your circumstances, who can walk with you and lift you up out of the valley. He's able to to raise up the bow down here. He's the God who loves you. You know what it is that so sweet? It's because his wrath is sweet. And when it comes to the God who can do all this, I think I'd rather be on this side, don't you? I think I'd rather have him for me than against me. Amen. The God who is able to do anything but fail, the God who's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask for a thing. He loves the righteous. He don't make a way for us. Oh, 
because he loves the righteous, he says that he's a God who relieves the father of pain. I remember quite distinctly, even though it's been very, very many, many, many years now, when my father was killed, and I began to think, what do I do? And I thought about this first time that God wiped away the great tears of my eyes. He's a God who knows. He watches over, he relieves the fatherless and that widow who thinks that she's all by herself. No, you're not all by yourself. And even though you want to come and tell me, you don't know how you're going to make it and you don't see your way clear. And I shake my head with you. I'm also thinking in my mind that if you're 60, 70, 80 years old and God has brought you this far, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. He will be with you all the way to the end because he's that kind of a God. He relieves the fatherless and the But the way of the wicked he turns aside. He says the ways of the reason the wicked can't get away is because God turns their plans. He, he confuses. He frustrates. The, the wicked will think they're getting over and getting by but God will bring to light What's what? Done in the dark. Amen. They think that, no, do I know about this? Oh, yeah, somebody knows because he sits high and he looks low. He knows what's done in the dark and he will expose it in his own due time. But the way of the wicked is turned to the And I want to close that Jesus said, the Lord shall reign. By my soul this week as I meditated on that, the Lord, we put all our confidence in money. We put all our confidence in politicians. We put all our confidence in our little houses and lands and our possessions. We put all our confidence over here. And we just think that this is that the money is going to rain. We think that the politicians, we think Trump's going to be in office forever. We think that uh, so and so is going to be around. The come and, one who reigns forever. The Lord will reign forever. You need to be aware of this when you are tempted to put your confidence in something that is in and of man, that that's here today and gone tomorrow. But if you want to walk in safety and in security, you need to grab a hold of this verse and let it become the foundation for your life. The Lord the Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. God's going to reign when the world's on fire. When everything else fails, our God shall reign. And that's why his name is to be praised. That's why he's God above all gods and Lord above all lords. And I just want to praise him and magnify his name because our God shall reign forever. Oh, we had that death angel speak to the family again this week, and a whole generation has now been cut out. Ten brothers and sisters of my father's family, that whole generation is gone now. But I have good news that death shall not reign forever. The Lord our God shall reign forever. Death is one to bow, and there will be no more dying, but the Lord God shall reign forever. That's why our hope and our confidence should be in the Lord. He's in the And the psalmist said, praise the Lord. Are you living this morning in your constant pain? Because who can so, How do we so much from what He's a good God. He knows. You know, some of y'all get go mad and do something. So I just can't help myself. Well, well, God can't help himself. It's always good. He can't help himself. It's always good. Whatever he does, it's, we can't see it all the time. But it's good. It's good. And that's all. That's the, that's the kind of God he is. 
or I will do it. Do you know him this morning? Have you trusted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you invited him into your life and said, I surrender all to you? I want to be whole in your hands. Can you stand this morning? We're going to have some music playing. And as it's really just playing, we open the altar. We invite people to come forward. You may just need prayer for your life. Or perhaps you would like to be connected to the church or make a decision for Christ. Or whatever your need is, we want to give you a few moments this morning to come. As God has spoken to your heart. Father God, we come now this morning and we thank you for being our God. We thank you that you're the God of our all gods and Lord. And as we kneel before you this morning, we just pray, God, that you will meet us at that point in our life. Some of us need to put our life in your hands. Others of us need to commit our lives to you. Some have come on behalf of family, friends, or other needs. Perhaps financial, physical, emotional, personal, whatever it is, we know it's not too hard to do. We do pray for Sister Mary Harris, Sister Chrissy this morning. We pray for Pearl today. We pray for the Lindsay family today. We pray, oh God, for all of those who are believers and those who are here. We lift them up in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord that you would look at each one who's at this moment and help them now to confess you as the Father God, we do come in and we thank you that you are the God. We pray for your power. We confess you. 
I just want to thank the Lord for another opportunity to do right and to help my family and be blessed. I'm sure we have been blessed. And I do want to say I want to pray for my cousin, my Ron Clayton, who had my same age as me, had three strokes, and now he's learned how to walk in. As we begin this communion service, we remind you that suffering of our Lord is now going to be with our saints. The name of our They were exceedingly soft to sin and to say the answer is that he who looks at the man is the son of man is just as he looks at the Lord and the sacrifice for the good of And Judas, who was betraying into it, said, Rabbi, is it I? He said, and as they were leaving, Jesus took the last step of communion with the disciples. He took the cup and took the cup and took the cup and said, Take it, this is my blood. This is my blood for you. Take it, this is my blood. My sake.
Then after we bless this infant, this is Joyce Bingham's last Sunday with us. Robert has been coming every Sunday for the last couple of months and so we need to make this home out here. You think I could uh you think I could hold it? Let's see how this goes. Church, would you bow with me and we're going to ask the Lord's blessings when we do that? Here we go. This is not too much. Yeah. 
how the God can come down and hold it. He's the Lord. And he's the Lord. And we honor him. And we serve him. Then we pray for you and we pray that you will be saved. Bless these parents and their families and their children and their gifts and gifts and possessions that they will strive to be that was forced. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just don't want to come at once. <laughs> Let's all stay you are. Yeah, the windy city, 40 degrees. Help yourself. Amen. We? Father God, we want to thank you for your grace, mercy, and love. We come now and ask again your blessing upon your people as they go forth this week. We pray 
especially in this point, you realize it's more important to do things that might mean replaces, might mean the future. So we take these things very personal. We just pray that God will bless them. All that's Oh. Cool. 